All right. My wife isn't up yet, so I can have my bike in the ba in the living room here. Some notes. I wound up watching, it was a really cool video. It was <clears throat> on the history of Shelby bicycles. And Shelby started out, Shelby, I mean, this is a Huffy, but the fenders are Shelby. Started out in the 1800s, and it also went along with seamless tube technology. And the reason, one reason I like these old things is you, you dig back into the history of these companies, you always find these entrepreneurial spirits that started with nothing and built these empires as it was. Just like the guy that invented Fritos. That's another interesting story. But right now I have matched the handlebars. Paint is hard to match. You think you go to the store, that's the right spray paint. You come home spray and it's like, oh my gosh, how many different kinds of whites are there? But I got lucky I found one that matches more or less. This is different than this slightly. According to age and also manufacture. Shelby, puppy, puppy. But that was a major score. I also, bike shop laced the, the hub I bought for this thing to fit. It's 28 spoke, which is more unusual than 36, but that is neither here nor there. Now you might remember this bike when it had a rusty Shelby fender. New old stock from who knows, maybe the 50s, maybe beyond that, because in its basic form, these fenders, which look like motorcycle fenders, they're heavy, they're big, uh, were the same things that were on in the 30s and 40s. But let us see the progress here. First of all, that weird seat post, that seat post that I needed, I could only get it in seven inch, which is way too short. So I bought this 13 sixteenths, five eighths up here, walled, good quality, and filed this off down here so I could take that, that wedge from the original one and use it. And of course I couldn't find threaded rod that had the same pad, or the same um, size and, and thread count per inch. So I just bought a smaller threaded rod and you can see a little bit of JV weld in the bolt down there. This whole thing is glued together, which means I have to adjust it up here, but there's plenty of room underneath the seat for this nut to turn. And so, I could have this as high as I wanted. Let's see, get in there. That seems reasonable. I'm just gonna turn that. Not gonna tighten it by any means. There we go. Fits down to this ancient seat. Well, I didn't tighten it, whatever. Then the question was the fender. And so this is my project this morning before my wife wakes up and tells me I better start painting in the kitchen. Again, matching paint colors is tricky. This is that rusty fender. I cleaned it off, masked it, found the best red to match. It matches this fender. It doesn't match the frame 100%, but it is not a show bike. Masked it off and then painted those lines. And now I'm going to have to mask it off and do the black up here. There's actually a spike of black that comes way up, which is cool. And then figure out how I'm going to do the line work on this. I might just use a black paint pen. You can get black enamel paint and a pen. And then just do that using your hand as a guide along the fender as best as possible. Now I didn't do a perfect job on this, but this is the best part. You see the little bobbles right here? My wife, because this is her bike, said just leave them there because it matches the whole thing. And that's the beauty of an old non-perfect paint job is you don't want to have a perfect paint job, although I am pretty pleased on my masking here. Good quality masking paint. But anyway, that is that. This is the, the progress which is happening on this nice old bike. I still need to repack that back hub and get the bearing. They're a little loose. I need to tighten everything up. But with a coaster brake, you need to use high heat grease because a lot of heat is developed in that. 
But that is it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. The saga of this trusty little Huffy. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.